Okay, today we're going to talk about some of the other metals. And one of the most common metals that we find is copper. But copper is one of those metals that fools us oftentimes because we normally use color as a means of identifying the copper. We looked at one a sample like this earlier where we were looking at the blue and the green. And we said, oh, the blue is azurite. It's like azure skies, it means blue and the green is malachite. These are good examples, but again, we can be fooled because of the characteristics of color. This piece right here is copper sulfate. Very bright, beautiful. This crystal that we have here is really a beautiful crystal of pyrite, but the one thing about this copper is if you leave it in the heat, it disintegrates because it has a large portion of water in it, which gives it its deep blue color. So if you left this out in the sun, you'd come back in a few days, there'd be just some ashes laying there. It'd be kind of powdered blue. So these are very sensitive to dehydrating, and they're one of the crystals that have large amounts of water. This is another type of copper. Notice this time it's not the deep blue, and it's not the green, it's a turquoise color. And you can see it all the way through the ribbon of the rock. These type of copper compounds are very common. And the trouble is, is they're difficult to spot because this one's another example of copper. It has some greens and some blues. So green and blue is a general thing uh, if it's got copper, but again, depending upon the blue and the green, can determine what it is. These you'd recognize as turquoise. What's turquoise? Copper. It gives it its bright, deep color. But again, turquoise has the same problem. You leave it out in the sun without it being stabilized, it turns to soft rock and it's of no value. These are what we call gem quality pieces of turquoise because they've been stabilized. And what they do is they take them out and dehydrate them a little bit at a time. So that instead of running all the water out at once, we get just a little bit out and it hardens the rock. So that's why you can have a turquoise ring. It's really a copper ring. So we wanted to let, make sure you do that. This is what we normally think of when we think of copper. The copper color. The people um, have copper roofs. Our capital has copper on it. But the trouble is, is when we see it, we normally see it in this way. With the kind of green color. That means it started to do what? Tarnish. It started to oxidize. This is native copper which has been treated. When I say treated, they get it out of the ground, it looks like this. They hurry up and give it an acid bath, take off the tarnish. And then they seal it with a plastic sealer so that it doesn't tarnish like this. This is what you would find if you were looking for native copper in the, if you want to call it the wild or in digs. That's what you would find. This is what it looks like when it has been treated. So copper, again, is one of those really beautiful things, but it depends upon what we do. Now this is, of course, malachite. This is from Africa. It's a very hard malachite, and it's gem quality. They take these, they make pennants, earrings, they use it for watches, they use it for rings, but it's a gem quality malachite that is nothing more than copper. And I wanted to show one thing to you. If you can see this, there are some little rings on here. These little rings are what make it so valuable because they're the rings of copper that was laid down just like a tree ring. It's layered down in layers and those layers give it a beautiful texture and make it very valuable.